Hi guys, this is Irene Yvette, and on this episode of When Being Real Goes Wrong, I want to address Mark Lamont and his so-called anti-Semitic statements. During his speech, espousing on the many, many things that he believed to be true, some of which were a little bit backward and inaccurate, about the situation with Palestine. I really don't have a dog in the Israel-Palestine race. I honestly don't care. I think there are some sad things that go on during war, and that's unfortunate. But as far as being committed to getting emotionally involved or even intellectually involved in their situation, I just feel that I'd rather worry about the many, many things that we have to solve right here in the good old U.S. of A. With that said, let's cut to the clip and hear what Mark has to say about it. Regarding the question of Palestine, and beyond words, we must ask the question, what does justice require? To truly engage in acts of solidarity, we must make our words flesh. Our solidarity must be more than a noun. Our solidarity must become a verb. As a black American, my understanding of action and solidarity action is rooted in our own tradition of struggle. As black Americans resisted slavery, as well as Jim Crow laws that transformed us from a slave state to an apartheid state, we did, throw, we did so through multiple tactics and strategies. It is this array of tactics that I appeal to as I advocate for concrete action from all of us in this room. Solidarity from the international community demands that we embrace boycotts, divestment, and sanctions as a critical means by which to hold Israel accountable for its treatment of Palestinian people. This movement, which emerges out of the overwhelming majority of Palestinian civil society, offers a nonviolent means by which to demand a return to the pre-67 borders, full rights for Palestinian citizens, and the right of return as dictated by international law. Solidarity demands that we no longer allow politicians or political parties to remain silent on the question of Palestine. We can no longer, in particular, allow the political left to remain radical or even progressive on every issue from the environment to war to the economy to remain progressive on every issue except for Palestine. Contrary to Western mythology, black resistance to American apartheid did not come purely through Gandhian nonviolence. Rather, slave revolts and self-defense and tactics otherwise divergent from Dr. King or Mahatma Gandhi were equally important to preserving safety and attaining freedom. We must allow, if we are to operate in true, in true solidarity with Palestinian people, we must allow the, the Palestinian people the same range of opportunity and political possibility. If we are standing in solidarity with Palestinian people, we must recognize the right of an occupied people to defend itself. We must prioritize peace, we must, but we must not romanticize or fetishize it. We must advocate and promote nonviolence at every opportunity, but we cannot endorse a narrow politics of respectability that shames Palestinians for resisting, for refusing to do nothing in the face of state violence and ethnic cleansing. Okay, so he brought up some valid points. Let's talk about the good. He is absolutely right. People like to overlook and I'm sensitive to this because I'm Gullah. People like to overlook how everything wasn't just hugs and kisses and peaceful protests when it came to liberating American blacks. A lot of our ancestors fought wars. There was bloody violence. It wasn't just, please, please, sir, can you be nice? And I do agree that the Palestinians have the right to fight back. And nobody should infringe on that. At the end of the day, whoever's land it was historically is irrelevant to me because it's kind of a free-for-all in this world. If Western colonial colonialism hasn't taught us anything, the one thing it has taught us is that the person with the biggest guns and willing to do the most dirt wins. So, with that said, 
Where Mark did go wrong is, number one, don't use our black causes and our black oppression to justify anything for anybody, okay? I am tired of people pulling the black card out of their pocket and waving our oppression around every time they want to liberate another group of people. Stop. We're not even fully liberated yet. Can we get our stuff going on first before you start using us as a shining example of how people should be allowed to do anything or how oppressed a group of people are? Second, he forgot that black people do not have the monopoly on the oppression Olympics. That goes to the Jews. And on top of having the monopoly on the oppression Olympics, they also have the monopoly on running the damn world. And you just can't run around talking about Jewish people crazy and talking about how people need to fight back or have the ability to fight back and be violent against Jewish people and actually think you're going to get away with it. That was just naivety and stupidity on his part. But he's learned his lesson because he's been fired. And people are dragging him for the filth. Mark, Mark, Mark. You can't go for the Jews. You gotta leave them alone. Everybody gets drunk. What were you thinking? Did you think playing the black card was gonna trump the Jewish card? Well, you were wrong. And just for that, you deserve to lose your job. I will talk to you guys later.